carries the news at 6. First, the highlights. Governor Songwulu advocates tech-driven approach to Lagos history preservation. JAM concludes arrangement to fully digitize services to limit physical interactions with applicants. On the foreign scene, Italy braces for storm barriers as floods leave 21 people dead across Europe. In sports team Lagos increases medal sweep at ongoing 2024 National Youth Games in Delta State. Now the details, I am Taiwo Barua. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonlu has emphasized the critical role of technology in preserving the city's rich cultural and historical heritage and in ensuring its longevity for future generations. The governor stated this during a symposium organized by the Lagos State Records and Archives Bureau, LASRAB, with the theme, Lagos, Bridging Knowledge and Unraveling History. Governor Sonolu, who was represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Abimbala Salohonde, urged stakeholders and history enthusiasts at the symposium to explore innovative methods for engaging younger generations with the city's history to avoid the dissemination of untrue and distorted facts about the state. He stressed the importance of inclusivity in shaping the narrative of Lagos, urging collaboration between public and private sectors, civil societies and communities. The governor also highlighted that the ongoing story of Lagos involves everyone, making it essential to approach its history with objectivity, inclusivity and passion. Earlier, Director General of Las Rab, Tonyo Gulano, noted that the symposium was instrumental in dissecting the historical, colonial and socio-political influences that have shaped Lagos into what it is today. The Lagos State Government says it will no longer condone or accept people encroaching on government properties, land and setbacks, warning that all the illegal activities along the waterfront schemes and the corridor must come to an end immediately. Commissioner for Waterfront Infrastructure Development, Epundayo Alebiushu, gave the warning as the state's government issued contravention notices to over 280 illegal property owners and occupiers in the Maigo Waterfront Scheme, located in the Etiosa local government area of the state. Alebiushu noted that the state's government will not relent in its effort to protect the state waterfront schemes and infrastructure while ensuring the safety of life and properties along the coastal area of the state. He urged the property owners to voluntarily remove their structures before the expiration of the contravention notices served on them or come forward to regularize their document if they have any to avoid penalty. Lagos State Parking Authority, LASPA, has met with representatives of the restaurant, cafe, bar, and club, RCB Association, to address concerns regarding the state parking policies' impact on the hospita hospitality sector. During the meeting, General Manager of LASPA, Adebisi Adelabu, reassured attendees of the government's commitment to the policy which aims to tackle indiscriminate parking and the ease of traffic congestion. Adelabu acknowledged the significant role of the hospitality sector in the state's traffic and parking management, emphasizing the need for collaboration and support. She also addressed concerns about overlapping jurisdictions and local government interference and clarified that the state's government has established a strategic partnership with local government and local council development areas to ensure no disturbances of our parking levies. According to her, some hospitality businesses have failed to comply with the building regulations by not including sufficient parking for customers. And LASPA has offered a six month grace period for companies to address parking shortfalls and provide guardians on solutions. Ekiti State Governor Biodun Oyebanji has listed the benefit of the compressed natural 
natural gas. CMG initiative to include a cleaner environment and cheaper fuel for the people. Governor Ibanji stated this during the opening of a week-long skill development and training for auto technicians in the state conventional petrols to CNG powered vehicles. The governor, who was represented by the Commissioner for Infrastructure and Public Utilities, Bola Gialuku, said government at the federal and state level have collaborated to ensure that the Kitty State is in the forefront of these endeavors. He said the state is already using CNG to power its independent power plant and urge motorists and vehicle owners in the state to embrace compressed natural to power the automobiles in view of the inherent advantages. Akwaibom State Governor Umo Eno has announced the release of 60 billion naira to Ibom Air for the acquisition of two new Bombardier CRJ 900 aircraft. This move is part of the state effort to support the airline's expansion and improve air transportation in the region. Governor Eno made this announcement during a meeting with the social cultural organization Mbohoa Parawa Ibibio where he emphasized the state's ability to fund the project without external loans. In addition to the aircraft acquisition, Governor Eno revealed that 35 billion naira will be paid to beneficiaries of the backlog of graduate arrears by the end of September, representing nearly 50% of the accumulated backlog. Now to the rest of the stories. As part of measures to prevent extortion and enhance service delivery, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, has concluded arrangement to fully automate its services to reduce physical contact with candidates. JAM Registrar Shako Luidi, who made this known, said this had become important given that many of the candidates who take the UTME are underage. Oluidi noted that the board had received a series of reports bordering on some unwholesome practices, adding that a team has been deployed to the claims, promising to make the findings known to all. Wife of the President, Olura Mitinumbo, has 200 members of the Yaba Nigeria. Lunch of the club is aiding to the Federal Minister of Agriculture and Food Security. And the Renewed Hope Initiative, RHI, aims to catch the youth early so as to inculcate the, in them the love of agriculture and farming. Mrs. Tunumbu explained that the initiative is not just teaching them how to farm, but also nurturing a generation that will transform our agricultural landscape, imbibe modern farming techniques, and ensure that Nigeria remains self-sufficient in food production in line with the food security drive of the present administration. She noted that with the club spread across various schools in Nigeria, it will create the understanding that farming is not just an occupation but a way of life, which can create employment opportunities for the team and youth population and help to diversify the economy. Earlier in his remarks, the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiari, noted that this initiative will enhance the interest of the young in agriculture as a career. Today is World Patient Safety Day. The event is an opportunity to raise public awareness and foster collaboration between patients, health workers, policymakers, and healthcare leaders to improve patient safety. The day also provides an avenue for patients and families, health workers, healthcare leaders, policymakers, and civil society to emphasize the pivotal role of correct and timely diagnosis in improving patient safety. This year's theme, Get It Right, Make It Safe, is focused on improving diagnosis for patient safety. In foreign news, intense storms battering Central Europe are now reaching Italy where warnings of heavy rains, strong winds, and floods have been issued for almost all parts of the country. Floods are already reported in the central city of Pescara, while the Italian Meteorological Service weather alerts 
apply from the northern coast of Emilia Romagna to the far south. The warnings come as a flooding has devastated part of Poland, the Czech Republic, Romania and Austria this week, leaving at least 21 people dead. Authorities in Croatia, Hungary and Slovakia are also warning of flooding in the coming days, while significant flooding has been caused by storm barriers, which brought a vast amount of rain and snow at the weekend. In sport now, Team Lagos has continued to soar in the 2024 National Youth Games taking place in Delta State, with the state athletes making an impressive sweep of medals. David Akiyadi defied all odds by landing a gold medal for Team Lagos in the shot, but in the shot put event where he threw 7.74 in the event, defeating his counterparts from Delta and Edu State. The try of Fashala Biodu, Aki Oladiji, and Solu Simbiad also recorded four medals in their events. Abiodo won a silver medal in the 100 meters boys, while Simbiad settled for bronze, and Oladiji scooped two gold medals in the 100 and 200 meters. In boxing, Lagos for Pugilist, Agola Oyinda Mola, Belo Olamide Lawal, Yakubu Sofiat, and Bolarinwa Michael progressed to the finals in their different weight categories. Similarly, the Lagos Girls basketball team has set up a final battle against the host Delta, while the Lagos hockey team is set for the Southwest Derby, seeking qualification for the final in the semi final clash with Oshun State. And that's it on the news at 6, but just before we go, slow down at road junctions, intersections, and pedestrian crossings. You can follow us and like on the various social media platforms, X at Traffic Radio 961. Facebook, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. Instagram, Lagos Traffic Radio 961. Subscribe and watch our news and programs live on YouTube at Traffic Radio 961. You can also visit our website, www.trafficradio961.ng Did you know that the Songulu administration organized a mentorship seminar for over 1,000 1, youth on the theme Agropreneur Strategy for Wealth Creation? You can get more details on the Lagos State Government website. To end the news, here are the highlights of the major stories. Lagos State Governor Babajide Songulu has emphasized the critical role of technology in preserving the city's rich cultural and, and historical heritage in ensuring its longevity for future generations. As part of measures to prevent extortion and enhance service delivery, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, has concluded arrangements to fully automate its services to reduce physical contact with candidates. We also told you that intense storms battering Central Europe are now reaching Italy, where warnings for heavy rain, strong winds, and floods have been issued for almost all parts of the country. Finally, sports team Lagos has continued to soar in the 2024 National Youth Games taking place in Delta State, with the state's athletes making an impressive sweep of medals. For contact with the newsroom, send a message to info at trafficradio961.ng. That ends the news broadcast compiled by Adiwali Uloporoku. I am Taro Barua. Thank you for listening. Good evening.